And welcome back to the Los Alamitos Preview Show. Happy to be joined by track announcer and handicapper extraordinaire, Michael Rona. How are you, Michael? <laughs> I'm all right. Thank you, Orlando. Well, we have a great weekend of racing here at Los Alamitos and spiced up by a nice carryover, over $68,000 in the pick six. So with the pool that will be bet on, uh, with the additional money that will be bet into the pool on Saturday night, it should be a really, really nice big pool for the handicappers to go after. Thinking about 220000 somewhere around there, 200000 230000 somewhere in that range. A lot of money in that pool. Yes, it's the second big pick six carryover we've had in the last few weeks. And even putting aside the pick sixes, gee, there's been some big pools at Los Alamitos. Pick fours and overall handle, it's been really buoyant. Yeah, uh, last Sunday I saw the uh, early pick four was somewhere around 230000 for the early, even the late hit, $200,000. So, uh, yeah, the pools have been great. A couple of Sundays ago, we had a total pool of about $284,000 as well. I don't know if we'll get that high this Saturday night, but still, it should be over $200,000. Uh, so, yeah, let's. how about we get right to it and start looking at some of these uh, races in the sequence on Saturday night. The sequence will begin us, uh, with race number four. First post is at 6.30 p.m. So uh, we'll take a look at race number four, Michael. What do you think? Yeah, it's a split of a two-year-old filly maiden at 300 yards. Race six is the second division. And it's a very open race. Ed Burgart has the field wide open on his morning line. It's a big field, and he has the favourite at three to one. It's the horse that I fancy, AJ Flawless. A uh, few things I like about this filly, trained by Heath Taylor and ridden by Jose Nicasio. She cost uh, $84,000 at the Heritage Place yearling sale was just fair on debut but then improved significantly i thought into the second start on may 11 when finishing in the money along the inside eagle flash corona who's in this field also was just behind her it was actually a blanket finish for the minor placings behind a very good winner powerful wise lady but i thought that there was a lot of merit in the effort from the inside of aj flawless Okay, Michael, let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, May 11th race for AJ Flawless, racing from along the rail. Five powerful wise lady from eight to five. And she actually hit the side of the gate, Ready? leaving. Racing, powerful wise lady has begun quite dreadfully. You but can kind of see the jockey there uh, bubble a little bit. Contention quickly. Twitcher was the early leader, but powerful wise lady. And at the start, uh, AJ indeed. Flawless was seven. This is a nice way. Of work. Powerful wise lady by a clear margin. He's going to finish second, second in this AJ race, Michael. Flawless or Eagle Flash Corona, I think just in front yeah. of Twitcher. Um, you one can see the executive teller MRL was not far off those. You can see the horse coming in after hitting the side of the gate, shifts inward, and then at the gap, comes in again, really drifts in on two occasions, and Nicasio uses the whip, the whip in the left hand past the gap to just straighten her up. So she lost ground and she lost momentum in the first quarter of the race. Eagle Flash Corona is the seven horse coming down the outside and finishing well. She actually was drifting outwards under a right-handed whip. And there was only a nose between them at the finish, and uh, they have... Uh, the chance to compete against each other again on Saturday night. But Eagle Flash Corona has had the benefit of a clear path on two occasions. She's had outside draws. Uh, she goes into gate five Saturday night, whereas AJ Flawless's two starts so far have been from gates two and one. And I like the fact that she gets a crack from one of the wider gates and will start from outside Eagle Flash Corona in gate seven on Saturday night. This is the head-on view, Orlando. Yeah, let's take a look. This is always a really good view. You can kind of see how far inside AJ Flawless goes. There's the jockey making that correction. Yeah, I, I thought it was significant drifting on two occasions early. And uh, she did okay to balance up and finish second right up along the inside there. So... Um, I'm keen to see if she can improve third time out. She uh, she actually shifted inward at the start of her debut, and I went back and had a look at her final gate work before the debut, and she was on the inside 
in a two-horse drill, and she actually shifted in early as well on that occasion. So she has exhibited this trait three times now, but I've got to hope that with growing awareness of this habit and the chance to finally get to an outside, or at least the outside half of the field in the gate, that maybe this can be rectified. And if she gets away clean and straight, I think she'll be very hard to beat in what looks on paper, a pretty evenly matched group of two-year-old fillies. Yeah, when I was looking at this race, Michael, I, I kind of gave a look at four horses in this one. Of course, uh, the seven, AJ Flawless, just like how you just mentioned, off of that video work, really good effort. Uh, number one, set to go, was another horse that I kind of looked at and really liked, the 10, J. La Monarca. And the four, Navy of West, I thought those four right there were the, uh, the top contenders in race. Number four. Let's turn the page. Yes, well, Michael, just, I would just say qu very quickly, I, t I would yeah. add to that, uh, that that you would omit and ignore an all red Willoughby two year old at your peril because that barn has been hot and it yeah. wouldn't surprise to see the rail filly set to go improve dramatically at her second start. She was fourth on debut, beaten just a half length. And the third place getter is a subsequent winner. So do keep that in mind. Um, I've got to be wary of set to go just because of the fine season that the connections are having with their two-year-olds. Yeah, I definitely wasn't going to do that. I was I was going to include the the uh, the one horse set to go without a doubt because, like you mentioned, there is not a hotter barn, especially with these two-year-olds. They just keep winning and winning and winning uh, with yeah. the one set to go. Definitely was going to be part of uh, any type of pick six ticket. It's a very, very contentious opening race in this sequence. And let's go to race five. This is a two and a half furlong event. And uh, and I ended up on the five, Vermeer, uh, a horse that always, always shows a lot of early speed, has done uh, rather well at this two and a half furlong races. So I'm going to pick the, uh, the five, Vermeer, in race number five, of course, the second leg of this pick six sequence. Yeah, he's a consistent, reliable conveyance. And he has a nice draw out there in gate number five. And he's a must use in the pick six, no doubt about it. The thing I don't like about this race, Orlando, is that you have a scenario where there was a very long priced winner and you're now having to accept much shorter odds. I'm talking about McQuirter number four. And normally I don't like having to stomach such short odds right off a horse's long shot win. Um, a friend of mine liked using the expression that it, it can resemble going to the funeral having missed the wedding. And, uh, but in this instance, I would use McQuirter because, uh, honestly, I just don't understand why the horse was ever 22 to 1. I, I don't think there was an element of fluke about that. I think he's one of the most silly overlays that we've seen for a long time. I, I thought he should have been much shorter odds. I, I don't like talking that way after the fact. People calling can call you, a, you know, a Monday morning quarterback or whatever. But um, I just think it was ridiculously long odds for, for McQuirter based on the early speed that he had exhibited around two turns. And he uh, he ended up winning the race convincingly. And, and I, I don't think there was an element of fluke about it. And I, I'm going to have to stomach two to one or so to use him in this spot because I think he's a genuine chance of repeating. I think he's got a good shot. And, and they would be the two for me, the four and the five. Um, if, if I had to risk a horse, if I had to leave one of the top fancies out, I would take a stand against two bills number two. Um, both two bills and Vermeer finished behind McQuirter in that, that upset win by McQuirter. But Vermeer stays out there in gate five, same post position as last time whereas two bills now shifts to an inside gate. He had the outside gate six last start. He also had the outside post position six when winning at the two and a half furlongs a couple of races before that. Now he's got the switch to gate number two. And just on that basis, uh, if he's going to be eight to five, he'd be the one that I would try to beat. I, I would try to take a stand against him, depending on how big your ticket is, how wide you can spread in this race. I would go four and five and take the risk against the two. Yeah, and the four, just one last thought on McWhorter. Uh, the fact that they're bringing him back at that, at that two and a half furlong distance, I think, says a lot of where they feel that this horse can do really well. Because for that win, they could have looked for another race 
back at the thousand yard distance where he's done pretty well uh, most of the time. Mo a lot of the times I picked him on top and he's actually disappointed me a few times, but you always know that he can do uh, good things uh, when he's at the top of his game. So yeah, definitely a horse to watch in this one, the four McWhorter, uh, the fiber mirror. And I also had two bills. That's who's going to be my top three selections in the night lines program. Well, we got a busy, busy uh, rest of the, uh, the show. We got Chris Wade lined up next followed by George Duarte. George Duarte, what a big weekend he had with his selections. We'll talk to him a little bit more. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, for, uh, for joining us and looking forward to uh, seeing you back again this weekend, Michael. Thanks, Orlando. Looking forward to it, mate. Hooroo. Thank you so much. Year after year, Night Racing's best bets are at Los Alamitos Racecourse, the Los Alamitos Early and Late Pick Fours. Both wagers continue to feature outstanding pools. The Early Pick Four pool was over $213,000 on May 5th, and the Late Pick Four pool was over $190,000 on May 19th. And remember, Los Alamitos still offers the Pick 6 promo on Sundays if there's not a carryover. Year after year, Night Racing's best bets are at Los Alamitos, Saturday and Sunday nights. And we're back with the preview show and welcoming back Christopher Wade. Chris, we have a huge pick six carryover going in. Uh, that last commercial that we showed kind of flashed. The last big carryover that we had ended up with a pool over $284,000. Let's see how high this pool gets. Uh, we're going to be talking with you, Chris, races six and seven. How's it going? It's going very, very well. How are you doing, boss? It's going to be a monster pool. And we got a tough ticket in tow for uh, that big Pixies carryover. You got some wide open two yard races where you know pretty much anything can happen. Yeah, for sure. And uh, let's talk with uh, this race number six. And this is the first of three consecutive juvenile races that we'll have as part of this sequence. These are maiden Phillies, two year olds going 300 yards, and there's nine of them. Uh, another very competitive race in what looks like a pretty salty sequence, but hey, we're gonna we gotta find some some shots to take. Where are you gonna take me to, uh, Chris? Well, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna take a look to uh, Jimmy Glenn, the doctor's number six. So work with it. This horse uh, worked pretty well prior. Was a B and a B plus worker prior to the debut when running a decent fifth, but he was in a, in a quality field. The winner of that affair was a horse uh, up to party who came back to be the. Uh, Fifth fastest qualifier to the recently run trials with Edward Manning Futurity. So it comes out of a very strong race in a needed affair after working well in the morning. So I'm going to give you a slight edge to uh, work with it. There's our top choice in that sixth event. All right. Let's take a look at this race uh, from uh, Work With It, April 27th. And that will be uh, race number six, Chris. Let's, yeah, uh, let's queue it up right here. All right, here it is. They're ready. Racing. Elsia drifting a couple of paths wide. And you can see there on the uh, Ed Allred colors right there, number four, work with it. Yeah, the horse broke relatively well, kind of skied a little bit, was brushed midway, but was finishing steady the final half of the affair. And you can see the horse had run left to give. The horse was in, in a needed affair. And the horse comes out, like I said, a very strong event. And with expected improvement, this horse got a big look at the outcome in that sixth event on my charts. Yeah, and like you mentioned, up to party, came back from uh, from that victory and won again uh, while posting the fastest time to the uh, Edberg Million. And, uh, and also, uh, powerful yeah. wise lady also came back a winner uh, in the following start. So you okay. got to like the chances here. Let's take one Ready? more Racing. look there. Elsia drifting a couple of uh, Work wide. with it. Jamaican Spanglish up to party. Nice the horse broke there. Kind of drifted out and brushed a little bit right there. A little bit all over the track, the right? Inside, yeah, the horse was skiing all over. It's the first time starter, needed the race, obviously. And like I said, comes up comes a very strong race. As noted, that horse came back, I said, is the fastest qualifier for Ed Burke. So comes out of a very strong race. And with expected improvement, the two year old set. And like I said, the horse was at being a B plus worker prior to that debut. So definitely with the expected step forward has a big look in that sixth event. And a closely matched affair only gives a slight edge to that horse. 
Yeah, other horses that I gave a chance in race six, number one, Cava, Jonah Cash. Felix Gonzalez has had a nice meet uh, here at Los Al. And I also took a look at the eight, Janet Mitchell for trainer Monte Rosa. This one worked in tandem with Safari. Uh, they worked pretty close together, 12-4, but out of the two, I thought the eight, Janet Mitchell, definitely had the better workout of the two. Let's turn the page, uh, Chris, and go to race number seven. Uh, who do you like in this one? Well, I got to give the look with the experience factor to a separate impact. This horse was a, was disqualified out of a win last time. He broke from post seven, lugged in the final half of the affair and kind of brushed with the horse to the inside, the six horse near the wire and uh, was disqualified for the indiscretion. But the horse's debut was pretty good when burning pretty well in the debut. So the horse has been right there. Both lifetime starts comes out of a, uh, Wide open affair. You got it. The, the one safari was outworked by the horse in the previous race, uh, Janet Mitchell, who I, I thought was uh, better in the workouts, much like you. But safari's got a decent drill and toe for uh, Monty Rose, who's very good with the two year olds. But top to bottom, separate and back. Big look there as uh, our top choice. And one of our better bets on the racing car with experience. This horse can just break and run straight. Big look as the deserving favorite in that uh, seventh affair. Okay, let's take a look at that race. Uh, like you mentioned, again, this is a trial to the kindergarten futurity and separate impact. Uh, we'll start from post number seven. Uh, the Juan Aleman colors, uh, Jesse Gonzalez. Hold on. Ready for action. Everything looks good. Okay. And here we go. Here we go. We're going to have some fun right here, right? Yeah, the horse uh, uh, drifted in with a little bit of a uh, right-handed urging, drifted in steadily to, down the way down to post number two, but uh, uh, won the event, but was disqualified for that indiscretion, costing that to uh, some ground near the wire. But this horse could just break and run straight on my numbers as a big look to be the, uh, the winner as a deserving favorite in that seventh event. Yeah, definitely. Let's take a look at the head on if we can. Oh, don't okay, this will be the head on, Chris. And uh, let's take a look again at the seven right there. And uh, broke okay, but seems like as soon as he saw that flag right there and feels the whip, that's where everything kind of starts going wrong there for separate yeah. impact. And uh, in this one, uh, the runner up there, favorite princess, we're actually going to see that horse go in race number eight. Uh, it was favorite princess that ended up the winner in that one uh, in coming back here on Saturday night. So uh, yeah, uh, let's, anything else uh, that stands out in race seven, Chris? Well, the, the four, the four, the, the four's got ability. This horse lost all chance last time, broke slow, bumped back, cross, took up, lost multiple lengths, but finished pretty well far back under a hold. So it could be a, a long shot stab to grab a slice of the pie there in that uh, seven in for the hot barn of Felix Gonzalez. He's going great guns with the babies. Yeah, a pretty competitive race all around. Uh, I took a look at the one safari, uh, the two separate impact as well as interesting uh, defending champ. Uh, just like in that previous race, we can't leave out uh, Scott Willoughby uh, at all Red Horse, especially when Gabriel Lara uh, is aboard. So uh, another very, very tough race here as part of this big sequence here at Los Alamitos. All right, Chris, uh, anything else that uh, that you have here that you like for Saturday night? Well, like I said, that eighth race is wide, wide open. You got some a closely matched a winner event in that eighth event. The ninth affair might give a slight look to the one, the one look at her horse. I was very impressive in that uh, victory last time, 55 nights ago. And of course, uh, the five above, another horse that was well meant uh, uh, in that last affair, winning rather handily. The question mark, of course, would be the shipper of a political Susie. This horse caught an absolute flyer in that last race uh, at Remington Park when, like, leaning into the gate when the whole the gate opened up. So caught that flyer. It was a length and a quarter in front when they opened the gate, but uh, about worn down to the wire, went from a length in front to be beating the neck for third of the wire. But on the numbers, has a look at the outcome, but I'm giving the, the – the, uh, Edge to the, the rail horse, uh, one look at her and above in the finale, closing out that late pick four and a monstrous, monstrous pick six with that gigantic carryover. It's going to be a great pull. And you got some wide open races 
So uh, don't leave out one of those horses. It could cost you. It's happened to me. I say I say twenty four dollars, but I cost myself five thousand. You know, it happens. Just <laughs> well, somebody that uh, did not cost himself five thousand is on deck. Uh, George Duarte had a big pick four ticket that he gave out on the Night Lines program. We're going to talk to him next. Uh, thank you so much, Chris. Looking forward to a great Saturday night card. Great job, Chris. All right, Bosh. You have a good day. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos with exciting action every Saturday and Sunday nights. The Edbert Million Futurity Final is set for Sunday night, June 16th with a lineup of stars led by fastest qualifier up to party. Kindergarten Futurity runner-up My Bud plus undefeated standouts Norco, Big Hurt, and Laredo and more. The top juveniles in quarter horse racing plus night racing's best bets. Season high fools in the early pick four and our pick six promo always at Los Alamitos. Racing! And we're back for the final segment of this week's preview show. Happy to welcome back uh, George Duarte, uh, the uh, one of the top handicappers here in quarter horse racing and now featured on the Night Lines program, giving up his comments in the glances stages, also featured in the daily racing form. And also you provide a pick four ticket on page 22 of the Night Lines program. How did that go last weekend, George? I would say it was, uh, well, the first one, the first early pick four, I, uh, I was looking good, hit the first three, and then I had that that big single that everybody singled in the pick six, and then she's decided, nope, I'm not running again. <laughs> so, you know, I was out of there. I would have paid the pick six, got snapped there, and then I was like, well, I got to roll it into, you know, what I got left for the late pick four, and then everything came together. Yeah, it you was know, a 32 uh, I got table, lucky. Right? There was a couple of good breaks, like in the first, uh, I only had two horses and one of them broke through the gate, and usually that's death. But uh, I wasn't worried because he broke through, but it wasn't that bad. And then it gave him time, they reloaded him, and then he drifted out and hung on. And that so that was uh, that was good. And then I got best case scenario in, in uh, the second leg. And then the third leg, best case scenario again with the horse just flying out of the gate, and it was over, you know, as soon, one step out of the gate, the race was already over. And then I was nervous going into that last leg. I but I wasn't that nervous once I saw how good he looked on track. I thought he looked, you know, like I was waiting for Ed to tweet out about how good that horse looked. Out. That's how good the horse looked, and uh, got out cleanly and uh, uh, finished best. Yeah, so it was a two by four by four and a single, right? Yeah, finish out with a thirty-two dollar ticket. The uh, the payout over five thousand dollars in that late pick four. So uh, we're getting you at the right time. You're red hot, George. So let's talk about uh, this Saturday's card. You're going to talk a little bit about the race number eight and also about race number nine. What can you tell me about race eight? This is a group of winners. So uh, they've all looked good at one point or another. Uh, Born in the Blood won a trial to the the, uh, the rubber at their kindergarten futurity. Favorite princess was moved up from second to first also on that night to win a trial to the kindergarten. Yeah, these are always always have trouble. It's probably the race I would say I have the most trouble with is these uh, allowance horses that run in here instead of like wait for trials is because there's not really any trials coming up soon. So it's kind of like, are they do they feel they need a race or are they just knocking down the barn and want to run? So it's kind of a it's a guessing game. I mean, the favorite will be Born the Blood deservingly. I mean, he ran the best debut race for sure. But like, uh, for example, closer still, the one on the rail. I feel that Lara was kind of, he got out quick and early, and then he kind of just thought, you know what, it's a trial. So you have to either win or come second before you, for you to qualify. So he knew he wasn't qualifying, and he was just handwriting, and it wasn't. So I, I feel he can do better. Because if you watch it, he, he outfinishes the horse next to him and then uh, gallops out decently against, you know, Freightliner, who qualified for the kindergarten. And then you have uh, Elizabeth Alexandra, who who on debut ran ran well. I mean, ran the fastest of four four that night. And um, last time just did what a lot of horses do first time on the rail. They She hit the gate and ducked in and then lugged it in the gap. So that's a race to toss. But if you just go by her first race, which is a solid 12.28, and, you know, the Heath Barn, the Heath Barn is going good. So that's one you have to consider. Um, Miss up Polly Dash, you – you know, I think she ran to her breeding. Her breeding, I've noticed those sires, they're, 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 they're lower built uh, horses to the ground and they're quick, but I don't think they finish as well. And then, and I don't want to take her first time going 300 because that's, 
like especially you can notice it once they go 300 350 400 there's a big difference doing it first time the second time you see that improvement so i she's quick but i think she'll be outrun late and i just i rather back her next time you know if she like don't be dissuaded next time when if she's out finished this time is what i'm saying and then uh you got favorite princess who who ran in the slowest trial and got put up by dq because that horse i uh, lugged in one thing i didn't like was it was a really slow final eighth it was 10 06 and she never went by the horse that beat her like if if she if you can say okay she had the trouble but and then she galloped out ahead of the other horse that gave her the trouble then you can say okay she she could have run that much faster but i didn't like that she didn't get by so that's where i'm a little you know weary about using her and uh born blood he ran uh his prior work on t march 29th he worked uh outside of three other uh rivals and lost only the neck to uh kindergarten uh futurity qualifier zooming on home so he has competed with good horses and 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 been with them should improve draws well draws inside of you know favorite princess isn't that quick and broke in last time so should get another clear path um nandris azun gets the outside again and i feel it was a partially a product of the post that she uh, he won last time he the the favorite caught a flyer and and just weakened ran the exact same race he ran last time and this one just you know it ran okay. I mean, there was a night. It was the same final eight that's born in the blood. But I just feel, with how easily, what great of a trip he got, should have ran faster. So I, I, I can't see another big step forward. I can see maybe a half length improvement, but I can't see that big jump up like I can't see with born in the blood and, and even uh, I would say closer still. So I would say top pick would be born in the blood. And then if you want to spread, you can, I would use, I would get, use closer still and probably Elizabeth Alexandra. Yeah. My, my three selections are born in the blood, uh, Mr. Poli Dash and Elizabeth Alexandria, uh, the six Namjis Azum, uh, coming first time out, uh, from the rail that, that was a heck of a feel in that trial. You had my bud who's not only qualified to the kindergarten, ran second in the final, and then came back and qualified with one of the top times in the uh, in the trials to the Edward Million. Uh, hey, whoa, also qualify uh, to the kindergarten. And in, uh, in, did that horse win uh, his Edward trial? Uh, can't recall. Uh, in bull market, uh, looked great in the mornings. Uh, so all in all, it was just a tough, tough trial uh, for Namji Sazoom. Moved to the outside and, like you said, did everything right. Uh, in that race, uh, the five born in the blood. Let's just take a look at that race, uh, since I have it all queued up and ready to go here. Uh, this was the last, uh, his racing debut through a trial to the kindergarten futurity. His he is horse number four. Yeah, he breaks in, out break of there, time. but had plenty of room to run, George. Yeah, that's left handed, uh, passing the gap and laying down. And he kept on well and started edging away late in a solid 9.97 for debut. Up near the inside for third. He just kind of cruising. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to share that since we, uh, you know, he's a horse that some people might end up uh, singling in this pick six sequence because there's not many of them that you can really say, hey, I'm going to single this horse. No, the the race always did a good job okay, uh, making a good match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, heck of a job by the uh, racing office. Jordan Castaneda and his group, Nate Estrada, Tom Baisley, uh, and all that team there that worked very hard to put these cars together. They came up with a really good one. Let's take a look at race nine now. This is an allowance event at 300 yards. And uh, Chris kind of touched a little bit on a political Susie uh, shipping in from Remington Park. Uh, what do you like in this race? I'll start. This is, a, I think it's, it's a similarly, I would say similarly match field as the race before. They're all kind of, they have positives and they have some, you know, you can, some chinks in the armor. So like uh, the one last time faced, uh, well, the one look at her face, the uh, claimers uh, got loaded in, they popped it fast and she just was gone. And uh, Cruz and, you know, final eighth of 974 in a really fast time. I mean, you cannot expect that kind of start again. She is quick, but she's, that was just like as best as she'll ever break. 
So you would say, you know, if you were to adjust that clocking to a normal break, she probably ran like in the 1550s, which is still good enough against these. It's just, will she do it again? And now she goes from primarily outside draws. You know, this year she's fifth, sixth, sixth, and sixth, and now gets the rail. And last time she got on the rail, she broke in and didn't really show anything. So that's the one knock on her, you know, if you looking for a reason. Uh, Delightful again. Um, has run the similar races over and over. She's she's right there around the 1570s, and I just feel like a lot of these can run faster than that. And I just, you know, she's a this is thir- effort number 13. This is the seventh time at this, you know, this uh, condition. I just she's one. I'd probably be the last one. To, yeah, her and uh, Paul, a political Susie is another one I don't necessarily like in this race. She. If you look at the time, it was fast, 1769, but I dug deeper into that card, and she barely beat a maiden claimer, uh, a maiden claimer that won in 1777, and this was the fourth uh, fastest of five races, so it wasn't that fast of a race, and she caught a flyer, lugged out, and then just got ran down like pretty easily, and she does get the, the Barnes top rider, but I I just I don't feel she can finish as well as some of these. I think she might be as quick or quicker than these, but I just don't see her finishing well enough to beat these. Uh, the four uh, BF Cardo Rages, she uh, on debut beat Interesting Talk, who beat um, who beat uh, above, above who beat above two back or three back. Yeah, that was on uh, March. March. Yeah, March tenth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ran well on debut last time. Last time I think was didn't like the inside. Like I always, I don't like when being on the inside when there's a, a, a more than a few contenders outside of you. If there's only like one or two, I think I feel the inside is not a problem. But when there's like four, like a four or five horses outside of you contending, I feel it's hard for the inside to close into that. And that's what I think she experienced. So I would forgive that effort. Prior to that, she ran against, you know, a solid field and Freddie Teller, Arizona MRL and our favorite. And she, you know, she faced the boys and lost in a blanket finish. She was right there, or, uh, you know, until the final wire. She was second all the way until the wire where she got caught. So it's a better than look fifth. Um, she would be my second choice in here. Um, above, above last time they reloaded the field and, and, you know, the seas kind of parted when he, she broke well and then just edged away and won pretty easily in a good time. In a similar final eighth as the the rail horse in 977. This barn is does good is when, once they get one going, they keep them going. And so this one you you, you have to consider and expect an improvement from. Um, the the outside horse three's company uh, worked solidly in, in 12 12 four. You know, did nothing wrong didn't really excite me either and uh on september 23rd one one pretty measured it was only a neck but if you watch the rider he he was kind of confident that he was going to win the whole time but that race was pretty weak none of them have come back to win so it's a suspect field it was a slow final eighth in 1002 and i just i I would need to see like i would have liked the 12 one 12 flat work to really expect a big jump up because I feel that she needs to improve, I would say, a length and a half, two lengths to compete with these, uh, you know, hard knocking fillies. Well, so to wrap it up, I would say my top two would be one, look at her, and number four, BF Cartel Rages. Yeah, just a few thoughts in this race, number nine, and the one, one look at her. Uh, you mentioned how fast of a time. Uh, she posted 1534 uh, last time out. And, but when you look at the previous two times that uh, this runner went at uh, 300 yards, 1563 and 1568. So, yeah, uh, maybe it wasn't a 1534 uh, the time that she'll be able to repeat. But, yeah, 1560s and lower, certainly within her, uh, her abilities, uh, especially the way she's been performing uh, recently. I, I went with the 4A political Susie. Uh, just the way that these horses from Remington Park have come, uh, the three, right? Remington, Susie, uh, I'm sorry, we did have a scratch from uh, the entries to the final, uh, but the three now, A Political Susie, uh, 
yeah, just the way these horses from Remington Park have performed when they've arrived here at Los Alamitos, uh, I'll give her a chance uh, off of that. And again, one look at her is, is in the middle as well. And the third selection that I went with is the three delightful again. Uh, so those are my three picks. Uh, it should be a, an excellent night of racing race uh, with nine races on top, a big carryover over $67,000 here at Los Alamitos Racecourse. Uh, and again, the hot handicapper, we're happy to have them uh, join the show here. Uh, have you already worked your pick four ticket? For, uh, for yeah, Saturday. I've done the pick fours already. I mean, it's going to be a tough pick. Season. You're going to play, you're going to have to, I feel you have to have at least two singles because there's a lot of, and just be okay with if you were wrong, you're wrong. But in order to give yourself the best chance, I would go with two singles and then you'd be able to spread in the other race instead of going like a two by two by two. And then, you know, in the race where you're like, oh, I, that's horse I like best. I should have singled here. You just, I would go with the single, just like I did with that pick four I hit last Sunday. I singled the horse that wasn't the favorite. But I wanted to make sure if that horse won, that I was covered in the other legs, and it was allowing me to catch those two prices I got in the middle. Can you give me one of those singles that you that you like? I um I would have to single uh in the eighth race if I'm gonna play one of the single born to blood. I mean, yeah, it's drawn well outside. The outside horse is professional, won't break in, so I don't have to worry about that. The the horse inside of them breaks in. So then should get that clear path, will be better second time out uh, at 300 yards. And another horse I would say I would look at possibly singling would be, I like like a, like I was listening to um, Michael and I agree with McWhorter. I feel he, I couldn't believe he was 20 to the one last time. He's always been a speedball, always been quick. And Angie is good when she got some good, you know, when they won their last start, she wins at a 25% clip. So I'm not worried that, that the horse will bounce, has had plenty of time off, you know, has beaten these already, and it was drawing away. It wasn't like he caught a flyer and just hung on against them. He broke with them. The other ones broke well, and he beat them, you know, fair and square. There was no reasons to say the other ones can turn the tables based off that race. So I would take a shot with McWhorter and Born in the Blood as my singles. Yeah, my top selection of Vermeer is, uh, you know, it's always had – all this quickness, really fast, uh, has won at this uh, at this distance in the past. But this horse, when you stretch him out to a thousand yards, he's going to be like what five thousand and lower, while my yeah. word is going to be five thousand and higher. Yeah. So just from that level of class, you know, yeah, you could see my Werder just having that that class right there. And like they say, right? Uh, I, I think I've heard Chris Wave say this that the speed sometimes is class. So uh, let's yeah, see what and- happens. And that's not a horse people will be, you know, excited to single. That's one of them that you can separate yourself because they're going to see that 22 to 1. They're going to be like, oh, he won. I'm not going to single. And the horse loses. Like, why did I bet this horse now at 2 to 1 instead of 22 to 1? So it's a horse that you can single that not everybody's singling. Right. Yeah, you got to take those shots, right, if you want to if you wanna be alive there and give, your chance, give yourself a chance to spread in some of the other races on this very competitive card. You're going to have to spread – on a couple of races for sure. So you got to get lucky there and hit a single here and there. So, uh, so yeah, a good strategy session there, George. I appreciate the time. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy man. You got a lot of things going on always. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, I know, uh, I know it's going to be a fun night of racing. Uh, do you know how big your ticket is going to be for the pick six? I don't know. I know I got extra funds now, but <laughs> I'm going to try to be responsible. I'd probably be, I'd say usually it's between 192 and 256. Usually that's where I I usually like to play and where I'm comfortable, you know, with those budgets. So I feel if I get more, then, it's, then I'm trying to buy the pick six. That means I don't really have an opinion. If I'm putting in 384 or, you know, 562, that's, that means I, I'm just hoping. And it's like, I don't want to hope. I want to be confident in the ticket I'm playing in, you know, with and also being able to spread. You know, I should be able to get good coverage with two singles and at that price of ticket. You know what would be the responsible thing to do, George, is uh, bringing pizza for the press box on Saturday night after hitting that big pick four last Sunday. That'd so you want a Saturday, not Sunday? You choose. You choose the day. <laughs> you choose them. I'll, I'll let you I'll have let to you choose. Know. You choose. I'll definitely be bringing Nice. Thanks so much. 
And thank you for joining us. It's going to be a great night of racing here at Los Alamillos. Thank everyone for watching the show. And again, best of luck with your selections as we get go forward on this big weekend of racing at Los Alamillos. Thanks so much, everyone.